Well, I'm afraid it is. Uh, now, uh, the reality is that the Fed, like everybody, uh, has got uh, an inbuilt prejudice, which is uh, unemployment. But to actually reduce what is a very variable and volatile decline in inflation, to actually take it out of the picture, which is pretty well what has been occurring, is, I think, quite another matter. Uh, I, I, I find it quite, quite surprising, but we're not surprised by that. We've seen that before, Steve, many, many times in our career. Uh, then, of course, you have to say, what do you think? And you add the sound of my clucking to all the other uh, birds in the farmyard clucking. And I think the U.S. economy is amazingly strong. Uh, I think uh, the jobs figure was a momentary panic, uh, which is fading. And I think it would be completely fruitcake stuff to start cutting rates by 50 basis points, which is a signal that things are really bad when they are not really bad. So uh, I don't know what we're going to get, because I think it does completely depend on the data coming in increasingly on one single topic. But I can only tell you what I think makes common sense. I'm with you, David, and I think you've hit many, many points there. But but the signalling from going 50 in one go, that is like, oh, crikey, we're, instead of being in control of this situation, which we know central banks aren't quite as much in control as they love to believe they are, <laughs> the signalling would be absolutely scary for some in the market and could create some of the volatility they're trying to avoid in their dual mandate. But but the point I want to make as well is he has it in his power, uh, power? <laughs> Powell has it in his power to, to actually signal a dovish cut if he wants, i.e. the market could already price in 50 basis points over two meetings rather than 50 in one if it wants, because the market, as we all know, the price of money isn't priced off the base rate or, or the, the actual Fed funds rate. It's priced off the futures curve as well. He can do that if he wants. Yes, he can do that. But uh, I would stress, like you, that there is no need. The U.S. economy compared to, let's say, Japan or compared to Europe is incredibly strong structurally. Uh, not only secretly, and there is no need to produce panic measures which will produce panic. Uh, and that's the end of it, uh, frankly. Uh, now, what they actually do is another matter, but I think the danger is that they do, they create the panic they wish to avoid. Yeah, so David, I mean, was Jackson Hole perhaps the closest we had gotten then from Powell? pretty much declaring victory on inflation. I mean, I know he didn't put out those words, but when you compare it to the, the rhetoric out of Andrew Bailey and perhaps even out of the ECB, was that the closest we've gotten from him? This was a great uh, exercise in um, uh, exoneration of oneself. Actually, more than half of the speech was about how the Fed had been so clever and so good. Uh, the inflation had been caused by that extraordinary accident, we are told, between um, uh, commodity prices and overstimulus, obviously, by the fiscal authorities um, of the economy. And the Fed, like a well-trained pilot, negotiated through this. And thanks to the policy, monetary policy, they managed to bring down um, uh, expectations of inflation, which therefore resulted in and good inflation, lower inflation, which means that the Fed actually will solve the problem in an immaculate uh, kind of manner. And I think that is very typical of central bankers in which they take themselves out of the equation of having caused inflation and been a part of causing inflation through excess uh, quantitative easing, excess money printing. And they say, oh, that wasn't us at all. We're perfect. Actually, more than half the speech with self-congratulation and um, self-exoneration, which I have the gravest doubts about. But then, of course, I'm not an academic uh, providing the pillars of uh, support for such uh, pleasing theses at Jackson Hole.